Welcome everyone to a first in this series of tutorials on raw therapy. Now raw therapy is a raw processing program. It's similar to Lightroom, but the thing that makes it great is it is free and open source. If you want to download raw therapy, you can come here to HTTPS raw therapy spelled R-A-W-T-H-E-R-A-P-E-E dot com. And I know therapy is spelled wrong and you can come to the downloads tab and then you can just click the download arrow for your particular operating system and then install it. Once installed, you can come here and in order to access our images, we have to first find them. And you can come here to the, the folders tab and I'm on a Windows computer. So coming here to users and then desktop, you can see that I have this image here on the desktop. So once this image is selected, I can come here to the editor and I can double click on it in order to bring it up in the editor. I can also be here in the file browser and just double click. If there was more than one image in my folder, you would see them displayed all up here. And you could just double click down the line in order to bring them up here in the image viewer. Your interface may look a little bit different than mine. Perhaps you also have a left sidebar here and you can see that we have this panel right here, uh, these panel buttons, and these panel buttons open and close the differing panels. So I can just click each of them in order to close everything and just view my image, or I can open up certain ones as I need. Given that I don't really need my histogram for now, I'm gonna close that, and I don't really need this image viewer because I only have one image, I'm gonna close both of those. To navigate around our main window, I can scroll in, and scroll out with my mouse wheel or I can zoom in and zoom out hitting the plus or the minus keys on my keyboard. Right here you can see that I have the hand tool selected. I can pan around my image by grabbing that hand tool. There are some other tools up here and we'll use some of those. For instance this is the straighten or align tool. So I'm going to click on that and you can see immediately as I do over here in the processing profiles area I'm automatically taken over to the transform tab. And now I can just drag a line out in order to straighten my image slightly. I'm going to come back here to the exposure tab. You may already have a profile added to yours, such as Brighton or Auto Match Curve ISO, something like that. What I would encourage you to do is just come down here and click reset and that will reset everything to its default. Remember, raw therapy is about processing raw images from your camera. If you don't know, a raw image is an uncompressed image file, similar to a photograph. However, a compressed image file would be something like a JPEG image, and raw therapy can also process those. I took this photo with my cell phone, and it is current it's a dng you can see up here the name of the image is a dng which is a raw file so to start off with the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to come down here to the tone curve and i'm going to click here and select standard and you can see the histogram of my image and in order to add contrast to my image i'm going to take this point here on my graph and i'm just going to drag it over until it, I am at the beginning of where you can see the mountains of my histogram. And if I want to, I can turn on the clipped button to see where, where items in my scene are 100% black. And I don't want too much. If I bring this all the way over, you can see that there's too much black and that's not gonna work well for me. So I'm gonna just bring that back to the very beginning. And now I'm gonna come to this, this white triangle and I'll clip that, I'll, I'll select that, and that shows me where things are 100% white. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting my black and white levels. And you can see that if I move this all the way over, everything that's black is then 100% white in my image. So I'm just going to go ahead and find, I, I like to come down here to the bottom so I can kind of see what I'm doing, and select about an area and then bring it up to the top. And you can see that my clouds are blown out there. But that's image in the background, that's information in the background, and it's not super relevant. Okay, so now if I want to, 
I can come back up here and adjust my exposure accordingly. And you can see that if I adjust it like this, everything gets wider. Or if I come back here, everything gets darker. And I'm actually going to darken it down just a little bit because I don't want to lose the detail in the sky. Next, I'm going to come here and I'm going to take the saturation and bump it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's say a saturation value of 40 seems about right. Now I'll close that down and come over here to the graduated filter. And you can see as I turn that on, all of a sudden this top half of our image has gotten darker. And the reason for this is because the graduated filter, if I click this button, uh, darkens things out. So if I have it down here at the bottom or here at the top, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around and place it right here. And then I can, you can see I can either make it lighter or darker. And I've actually rotated it the wrong way. If I rotate it back around like this, and then I can go ahead and pull the strength backwards, I can actually lighten up. this part of my image. Of course I have to be careful because places like this will get blown out so I don't want to do this too much and I can actually turn it off to see the effect that it's having. And I just want that to be a subtle effect and if I feel like the effect is too... is not gradual enough I can actually increase the feather and you can see that the distance between these two these two lines increases indicating that there will be a, gra a greater and more gradual transition between the dark and the light. Okay next we'll come here to the tone mapping and we'll just go ahead and turn that on and that will just brighten everything up. I'm just gonna rotate this slightly and then decrease the strength in order to lighten that up just a, just a hair more. So we can turn the tone mapping off. You can see that the tone mapping also adds a little bit of sharpening. And speaking of sharpening, we can come over here to our detail tab and we can turn on the sharpening right here. Our detail tab is also where we can do things like noise reduction or defringing. We can also do haze removal. If I turn that on, you can see that it removes lots of the haze and adds a lot more saturation to my image. So I like where this has gone so far. Next I'm going to come here to the color tab and if I wanted to mess with the white balance I could here in the white balance tab. But also I want to add some vibrance. So I'll turn the vibrance on by ticking the on button there and then I'll just increase that until I feel like the colors are as vibrant as I want them to be. Perfect. Now that that's done, I'm going to come here to the Transform tab and turn on the Crop tool. I'm going to crop this image for Instagram, so the ratio that I will use is a 4x5 ratio. And then in order to move my box around, I'm going to hold Shift and drag. I can resize it by grabbing one of the sides and either pulling in or out and I'll resize it as such. If I want to select my area I can choose select and if I want to freely crop I can go ahead and untick lock ratio. I can also select portrait or landscape so that this will turn 90 degrees and my long side will be across my image. One important thing to note in raw therapy is that when you crop your image it leaves the pixels here just in case you want to uncrop it later. If you don't want to see those you can just come here and change the background color to black, a lighter gray, or a white. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the default for now. Next I'm going to come here to resize and I'll turn that on. And what I want to do is go ahead and resize where it says the, the height and I'll just put in 4K just because I want my final JPEG image to be nice 
and compressed. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to bring back my top view here and I can right click on this and I can say put to queue. And if I put that to queue, what that will do is it will add any image that I click the, the cog wheels on will come into the queue. And then I can take all of my queue and I can just turn it on and it will process all of those images at once. But if you just want to process one image, you don't have to go through that whole process. You can just hit control S. I want to save it here to my desktop. I'll change the output to a JPEG. And I'll give it a name such as flowers. If you want to save the processing parameters in a separate file, you can go ahead and tick this. And then I can just click OK. And you can see I've opened up our image and it looks great. As I'm looking at the finished JPEG, however, I'm noticing that it's quite noisy. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'll come back here to raw therapy and come to the sharpening or the detail tab. And here in noise reduction, I'll turn it on. Now you can see many of these have a one to one ratio. What that means is you won't be able to see, oops, not impulse noise reduction, noise reduction. You won't be able to see the effects of that particular tab unless you are at a one to one ratio of zoom on the image. An easy way to do that is come down here and click this, this one to one zoom. Now I can turn off the, the noise reduction. You can see it's quite noisy. I can turn it on and then I can add a little bit of luminance. You can see if I add a lot of luminance, it smooths everything out, but I get artifacting here around edges. So I'll add maybe about 20 in the luminance. And then for the detail recovery, I'll bring that up to maybe five. Now, as I zoom around my image, I'll just make sure it looks okay. If I zoom back out to 100% or to my crop by hitting this button, I can no longer see the effects of the noise reduction. Save it one more time. And you can see it saved a separate file, flowers-1. I'll double click. And you can see that our noise issue has now been taken care of. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this has been super helpful for you. If it has, consider adding a like or a subscribe, and please consider commenting about your images below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.